What is going on saxophone fans? This is Tyler Anderson with getasax.com. We get a lot of questions about the kind of microphones that we use on our channel. So I wanted to take some time to discuss what kinds of microphones are good for recording the saxophone. And most importantly, how do those microphones color the sound of the saxophone? We're also gonna talk a little bit about what kind of microphones are good in which settings, whether that's for a live setting or a studio setting or just practicing at home. I've got three microphones set up right here that we're gonna test out, so let's go ahead and dive in. microphones that we are going to work with today are first the AKG P420. This is a large diaphragm condenser microphone. Next we're going to take a look at the Shure SM57, a very popular dynamic microphone that is often seen at live music venues. And then lastly we have the SE Voodoo VR1, a passive ribbon microphone. Now, when we listen back to the recordings off of each of these microphones, I will discuss a little bit how each of these microphones capture sound. I'm definitely not an expert on how microphones work. So if I say anything iffy, please bear with me. I can definitely have a great conversation on how each of these microphones color the sound of the saxophone. I took a little bit of time before recording to make sure that each mic is um, set up at a similar distance and also making sure that I'm getting a similar input level off of each microphone on my audio interface. Obviously, these things are not gonna be perfect. Each one of these microphones captures sound differently. All right, let's go ahead and hear how they sound and then we can talk about what we hear. Now that you've had a chance to hear how each one of these microphones sound, I'm sure you already have some observations and opinions, but let's dive a little bit deeper and uh, take a look at how each one of these microphones captures sound. So the first microphone that we were checking out is this AKG P420. This is a large diaphragm condenser microphone. Uh, condenser microphones are very popular in studios. They're often what vocalists use on pop records to record. They're known for being extremely precise, especially in the high frequency range. And this is why they're really popular in the studio. Our ears are centered towards hearing in the mid frequency range. It's where we, we pick up uh, the sound of people's voices and things like that. So when we hear the high frequency range boosted, it's a really pleasing experience. Um, real quick, I did bring up a diagram here that is on mynewmicrophone.com. Um, it shows uh, right here the parts of a condenser microphone. We have the diaphragm, the backplate, and the electrical leads. Essentially, these electrical leads are creating a magnetic field that exists between the diaphragm and the backplate. Um, when sound hits the diaphragm, the diaphragm begins to fluctuate and the distance between these two plates changes and that is captured as an electrical signal which is then sent to your audio interface or amp which will retranslate that as sound. Um, so anyways, as we listened back to this recording, Um, so we can definitely hear that uh, what we're saying about this microphone, which is that it's extremely precise, is really true. We can hear in that saxophone recording that 
Um, there's an incredible amount of detail. Let's move on to the Shure SM57 next. The Shure SM57 is a dynamic microphone um, that is created for using in live sound settings. Um, when you play at a live venue, you don't want microphones that are extremely sensitive because um, they are going to pick up everything that's happening around them and that will just turn into mud. So you want a microphone that isn't super sensitive and um, isn't going to pick up sound from far away. Hence the SM57. So if you've been at a gig, you'll often find that if you're playing saxophone, this is the mic that they're going to give you. Real quick, let's go back uh, to uh, our diagrams over here, find the condenser, or sorry, not the condenser, the dynamic. Um, so a similar thing going on with this microphone, uh, its parts are the diaphragm, the conductive coil, and the electrical leads. Um, so in the case with this microphone, sound is hitting the diaphragm and that is going to make the coil move um, and make the magnetic field around the coil move. And that is going to be translated into an electric signal that is sent to the amp or interface, which will translate it back into sound. Um, interesting stuff. Like I said, if I'm getting this wrong, uh, please let us know in the comments. So if we go back over to this and hear how this microphone sounds. The Shure SM57 is going to capture less precision and it's also going to do a poorer job of capturing the low frequency. Um, this is helpful in a live setting. This is not helpful in a setting where you're recording for an album or something like that. Um, if you're looking to record saxophone for people, uh, sending uh, people recordings of yourself playing, I definitely would not use this microphone. Um, it would maybe be good for recording a horn section type vibe, but um, it's generally not considered a studio microphone. So the last microphone um, that we took a look at is the Voodoo VR1 Passive Ribbon Microphone. Now, um, real quick, uh, let's go back to this diagram that we were taking a look at. The Ribbon Microphone is also a dynamic microphone, but instead of a coil, it is using a fluctuating ribbon inside of the microphone to pick up the sound. Now, uh, let's play back a little bit of this. <laughs> So after listening back to that, you might uh, say right off the bat that the ribbon microphone is the worst sounding microphone out of all three of these. Um, it's kind of interesting. So the SE Voodoo VR1 is the microphone that we use for all of our sample sounds. And for those of you that have had a chance to listen to them, they sound really good. So why am I not using the AKG P420 when it has uh, a more precise sound? This has a lot to do with preference. Ribbon microphones uh, roll off at the higher frequency range. So they do not do a great job of capturing that frequency range like a condenser microphone does. And so that's why uh, when you listen back to the sound, it might sound a little bit muddy or a lot of bit muddy. Ribbon microphones have become very popular for that warm sound that re resembles that analog feeling. Um, when in a digital world, when people have become extremely obsessed with the very precise microphones, there's been this pushback and this move towards the analog sound, which is the ribbon mic. Um, now I will say that uh, with the ribbon mic, I go in and I um, mix the frequency ranges, you know, like you would for any recording of the saxophone um, to remove some of that mud. And when I do, we get a very warm sound of the saxophone that resembles a lot of the recordings that we're used to hearing. So to kind of sum things up, we took a look at these three microphones and they all sound very different. A lot of it comes down to preference. Um, if you are going to be using a microphone in a live setting a lot, you want to bring something with you or you need something for playing at a, a, a cafe or something like that, I would go with the Shure SM57. 
Um, this is a very durable, um, affordable microphone that is going to do a great job in those settings. If, on the other hand, you are looking to um, record on people's albums, say that you want to have a home studio set up where you can kind of just hop in and record um, for other people, I would definitely recommend either going with a large diaphragm condenser microphone or a ribbon microphone. Um, in terms of deciding between the two of these, do you want to have kind of that precise pop sound that we hear um, on the radio a lot today, or do you want to go with that warm analog sound that is similar to um, the iconic uh, recordings of saxophone that we're used to? That's totally a personal preference.